thank you for coming. This is our last session in our DevOps track. Uh, really appreciate you turning up. Really appreciate your time to come to CA World, to come to the DevOps Cinema, uh, to learn more about where your journey is going. We've heard a lot of great stuff over the last couple of days. We've heard from some really impressive enterprise examples of how DevOps is implemented. We've heard some really cool things about the people and process and organizational changes that some of our customers have already gone through. But what do you do tomorrow when you get back to work? Or Friday or Monday, depending on how long you're staying in Vegas. Uh, and that's what I'm here to talk about today, to give you some ideas about your journey. And if you were in my session yesterday, you will remember I said that DevOps is something that you have to do. We can't do this for you. You have to do it. So how do you do it? What are your next steps? What do you can realistically take home and get done starting, let's say, Monday? So my name's Andy Mann. I'm with the office of the CTO here at CA Technologies. And I'll take you through just a few things today on what I think you can do next in your DevOps journey. So I'll talk a little bit about what I've learned. So I've visited some of the sessions. I've talked to a lot of our customers today, yesterday, day before. Uh, I've heard the keynotes, obviously. So I'll talk a little bit about what I've taken away from all of that. Um, and then I'll take you through the three core pillars of a DevOps transformation around people, around process, around technology, give you just a couple of ideas on each, and then maybe start to build a checklist that we can walk through when we get back to work on Monday to start building out our own journey towards a DevOps transformation. So, what did I learn from CA World? Well, firstly, I learned that the application economy matters. It's here, it's making a huge difference. There are disruptive forces in just about every industry. We saw that some of the sort of new unicorns, as Gene Kim talked about, are doing very disruptive things. We've learned that some of the businesses that are being disrupted are learning how to disrupt. So, for example, the smaller regional banks like Union Bank, and we heard from Dana Edwards, their CTO, talking about how he's using DevOps to compete and disrupt in a larger banking context, even as he's being disrupted by smaller operators, people like Square, for example. I learned that infrastructure matters. Facebook, you know, in the keynote yesterday with Amit, with our EVP of technology and products, Facebook talked about how we help them manage their infrastructure, and that was a really important part of partnering with them. So that was a really interesting revelation as well. Infrastructure still matters. And a lot of you here in the audience will be in the situation where you have your own infrastructure. Not everyone is using the cloud for everything. And so when you talk about a DevOps transformation, maybe you can't use public cloud services to be super agile like some of Gene's unicorns. Maybe you need to understand and work with your infrastructure internally and let's figure out how to get that agile. Um, I learned that socks are really important. So all over, the, I, I don't know where this came from, all over CA world, people have been talking about their socks. I wish I brought my cool socks. Um, I learned that big enterprises can do DevOps. That was a really big thing out of Gene Kim's speech, but we also learned that when we saw some of the organizations like Nordstrom, ANZ, ANZ Bank from down where I'm from, Australia, uh, we saw that from ING. We saw that from a range of amazing customers who are doing DevOps their own way. I learned that there's no one starting place for DevOps. DevOps is your journey. So we saw, for example, uh, some of our customers actually started in operations, streamlining their performance, their infrastructure management, their capacity planning, and their provisioning and their configuration and streamlining that part of their, of their, their software delivery life cycle. While others started in test and dev. And so finding the constraints is really important. 
So sometimes the constraints will be test and dev. They'll be in, maybe in the project management office. And I hope some of you have been able to walk around and see some of the other presentations, as I've been lucky enough to do, to go and see over in the far corner people talking about uh, portfolio and project management and how project management can still be a part of DevOps. You know, we see a lot of discussion, and this is another thing I've learned at CA World, a lot of people are starting to move away from bounded projects and doing iterative development that never stops. Pro, you know, at this point, development doesn't necessarily start with a project and end with a project. It's about continuously delivering new value for your business ownership and to your customers. And so I learned that new ways of managing projects are really important. I learned that understanding your portfolio is really important to figuring out which areas you should maybe start working on a DevOps approach. So you may not want to start doing DevOps with your uh, uh, general ledger in the mainframe, for example. But you might want to start doing DevOps in a mobile development or for web development. So different types of systems, different parts of your portfolio, you might want to treat differently. I thought that was interesting. If you've gone past the security area and gone to any of the sessions there, I learned there are ways to allow production to get access to development environments. So, uh, sorry, for developers to get access to production environments. Well, actually both, right? So operations can get access to, uh, 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 to development the same way that developers can get access to production, but securely. I learned over in the security area that you can do better with APIs, especially if you're starting to develop mobile. And think, speaking of mobile, you can start to understand performance and requirements out of the mobile environment using analytics to feed that back into development as well. So this is not just about your core Linux-based systems. Like Gene Kim said yesterday, again, something else I learned, this is not just about unicorns. This is not just about the LAMP stack. You can do DevOps in, I think Gene talked about laser printer firmware. You can do DevOps in COBOL systems. DevOps is for all systems. Um, the final thing I learned was DevOps is hard. The journeys that our customers went through and all of the presentations I saw in this theater over the last two and a half days they were difficult journeys. None of them happened in days or weeks. You need to be committed to transformation. This is not just business as usual. And it maybe doesn't affect your entire organization all at once because it is hard work. And so I saw a lot of organizations start to transform in one part of the organization and then start to bleed that out into the rest of the organization because it's hard to do DevOps. It's a fundamental change. It's going to be confronting to some people. There's going to be some people who maybe lose their empire. They maybe lose their importance as an IT hero. So it's going to be hard politically. It's going to be hard organizationally. It's going to be hard technologically. But hopefully CA Technologies, some of our technologies will help to smooth that transition. So there are some of the things I've learned. And the first thing I think on your checklist should be, what have you learned? What have you learned at CA World? What have you learned from us, from our customers? What do you still not know? And start to think about how you fill those gaps. Do you need to find new skills? Do you need to... Uh, reach out to other consultants? Do you need a, another discussion with us or maybe with some of our reference customers? Do you need to read some more literature? Do you need to go to Gene Kim's events and summits? What do you know? What don't you know? And start to fill out that knowledge. I learned that this is about people, process, technology. So I'm going to take you through those three pillars. And give you, 
I'm not going to go into deep dives. I'm not going to give you lots of slides. Uh, it is our last session. I want to try and make this a little bit more uh, conversational. So let's talk about people. Just a couple of bullets to start thinking about. Approaches and attitudes, training and partnering. So let's take those sort of one at a time. Approaches to DevOps. There are lots of different ways to do it. DevOps itself is a philosophy, it's a movement, it's an idea. Perhaps some would say it's an ideal. So how do you approach DevOps? Do you approach it as a cultural change first? Do you approach it as a process change first? As a technology change first? These are all legitimate. You can do any of these. You've seen from our customers over the last two, three days that they've done various things differently. So do you approach it by starting to work with your people and build up different attitudes to delivering software? This is a really big change. You know, the attitudes that we've seen from developers, they want to go faster, but they don't really care about stability in the operational environment. We've seen discussion of operations attitudes. They must have stability, and innovation is a problem for them. So attitudes have to change. Attitudes to each other, the trust relationships. Do your dev and ops people work together very well? Is that where you need to start? Do, do your developers already engage in agile development practices? Maybe that's where they need to start. You know, think about the people aspects. And I think DevOps starts with people. But again, maybe you want to start somewhere else. We've seen the skills that you might need. So through the various sessions, I mentioned agile, you know, skills with some of our technologies, things like CA service virtualization, CA release automation, the technology skills. But we've also seen the need for business skills the need for communication skills, to talk to each other. Maybe you start with a presentation workshop once every month. Maybe you start with uh, training on some of the configuration tools like Chef or Puppet. Maybe you start with training in uh, training your operators to do scripting. Maybe you start by training your developers to do operations and understand performance characteristics and capacity plans. Maybe you start with partners. This was, again, some of the research that we had. And again, I'll remind you the research that we conducted around 1,400 enterprises globally is available on ca.com slash DevOps. And one of the top, top approaches was to gain insight from consultants. And obviously here at CA World, we've had, and I hope you've been able to get to some of the other areas, but we've got just right here behind us, people like PwC, Tech Mahindra, CSC, and others who can help you understand the business implications and the organizational transformation. Maybe you start to partner with companies in technology, like CA Technologies, to help you with the technology side. Maybe you partner with some of the big consultancies, Accenture and others, to understand how do you transform your people skills. Again, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas around approaches, partnering, attitudes, training, because these are essential, important elements of moving forward in your DevOps journey. So the second leg is process. So think about your process. This is absolutely critical. What's your delivery process from end to end? And when I say end to end, I don't mean from dev to ops, right? DevOps doesn't start with dev, and it doesn't end with ops. I don't know if you recall the slide that Gene Kim put up, talking about DevOps as a term, and then he went star ops, and then he gave us a nice regex expression for everything ops. NetSec ops, DevOps, PMO ops, Doc ops. There's a lot of stuff that happens here. So think about the process from an idea. And this is an interesting idea. How about going and talking to every single person in the software delivery chain? Go and talk to the business leaders who come up with these great ideas. Ask them about their expectations. Ask them what sort of ideas they want to try and get into production. Ask them their experience of getting an idea 
into production, into reality, backed by software. Because again, at CA World, I've learned that every business is a software business. So every idea that business ownership comes up with, the business leaders come up with, ends up being supported by, or maybe completely delivered by, software. So talk to the business ownership. Where does that idea go? Does it go to a PMO? Talk to the PMO. Does it go to a business analyst? Talk to the business analyst. Does it, that, where does that idea go then? Does it go straight into development? Does it go to a product manager? Where does that idea go then? Does it go to test? Does it go to QA? Do you have, go to SQA? To, then to into operations? Is there an infrastructure team? Is there an architecture team? Then where does it go? Where does security get involved? Where does network ops get involved? Map this out. Actually draw it down. Put it on a chart. Get a big whiteboard and draw the whole thing. And then start to understand the value map. Look up this term, value mapping, if you don't know it already. There's a lot of stuff that happens in your software delivery lifecycle that is churn and thrash. I'm not going to say it's not valuable. That's for you to decide which parts of that software delivery lifecycle are valuable and which are not. But I guarantee you, there are elements from start to finish of that process where you're just thrashing. You're doing busy work because that's what you've always done. You're doing busy work because that's what your process requires you to do. And it's built up over time, but it's calcified. If DevOps is about maybe one thing, it's about breaking down barriers and breaking down silos because you want to smooth that flow. Find out where you can do things in parallel instead of in series. Find out where you can just not do things. This is a really important concept about transformation. Transformation is not just about doing new things. It's about not doing old things. So you, DevOps transformation is not just about adding new process. It's about changing the process you've got. So really start to understand that end-to-end -end software delivery lifecycle. Think about the positions in your organization. Think about the org chart. You will have seen from a number of our customers, they put up little charts of their dev organization, their ops organization. They put some flow charts about how it connects to PMO, how it connects to infrastructure, to QA and to test. So who owns those organizations? How do they work together? Do you have structural barriers for those organizations to work together? So some structural barriers that I see could just be different leadership. It could be that the, the developers report to the business while operations reports to IT. It could be that development is a building in New York while operations is in a building in Bangalore. There are lots of structural barriers there are new positions involved too. I, tell you, I said yesterday that having a DevOps team is an anti-pattern, but it can be successful at least in the short term. How about the idea of a DevOps engineer? Someone who knows Dev and knows Ops. That's an anti-pattern as well. This is not about creating one team or one skill set. It's about connecting and collaborating, communicating, but a DevOps engineer position can be a catalyst and can bring in the knowledge and the skills that you might need to take on this transformation. You might need to create a DevOps organization, at least in the short term. And I would not recommend that as a long-term answer to any of your problems. But for a bounded project where you can gain experience, gain skills, gain understanding, start collaborating, understand each other, build empathy, build trust. Maybe because your organization is so big, you can start in a small way with a DevOps organization. But again, look at all the org charts that I showed yesterday. Go and research for yourself. One great thing about the DevOps community, it's really open. There's a lot of sharing goes on. Look at content from not just today and yesterday and the day before at CA World, go and have a look at things like the DevOps Enterprise Summit. Go and have a look at the DevOps Days. Have a look on YouTube.
browse the blogs. There's a lot of content out there about how other organizations are doing DevOps. You're not going to be able to do what they do. You have to make your own journey, but you can learn from all of those. The different org charts that we've seen in gaming organizations, in online and web organizations, in larger enterprise organizations. Look at the roles. Look at the workflow that they have. Look at the positions. Look at the org charts. The third leg of our stool is technology. Now, yesterday I promised not to speak about technology. Today I'm going to speak a lot about technology. This is actually really important. I understand DevOps is a cultural transformation. It's about people. It's about empathy. It's about collaboration. It's about communication. But you know what? In a large organization, technology matters a lot when it comes to DevOps. It helps a lot when it comes to DevOps. There's a theory which I, in various presentations and blogs, have touched on. Uh, it comes from two people in the industry who I respect greatly. Uh, CAMS, C-A-M-S, culture, automation, measurement, sharing. This is a way of looking at DevOps. Culture, I've talked a little bit about. It's the people, it's the organization. Measurement, automation, this is where technology comes in. Automation is something we do a lot about. So when you're thinking about the technologies, think about how you can automate, I'll come back to that, how you can automate things around parallel development. How you can automate that flow. How you can use automation to take the drudgery out of the development and operations workflow and allow them to be creative. This in turn can allow them to start to be that self-managed team. This can allow them to work together because it builds trust. So I'll give you an example. With something like CA service virtualization, developers don't have to wait for an infrastructure team to stand up an environment to do test and QA. So they don't have to wait so long. So they start to get this attitude towards the infrastructure people and this applies to the test and QA teams as well, by the way. They start to get this attitude to the infrastructure people that, hey, they're here to help us. They're not here to stop us doing what we want to do. We're able to do what we need to because they're helping us. You start to build empathy, trust, belief. These are the human elements. Similarly, service virtualization for operations teams they realize that this stuff that's about to go live has been tested. So they understand that it's going to work. We're not going to have those scalability issues. It's not going to fall over because I couldn't get test access to a database that I needed, so I just didn't bother testing that module. So again, the operations team starts to trust the development team. They start to believe that development is not there to hurt them. You know, we heard Jim, Gene Kim talking about that yesterday. The other team is not there to hurt you. Continuous delivery is a very core concept in DevOps too. It's really hard to do that without technology. And what is continuous delivery if there's only people involved? Is it people hurriedly committing, checking in, releasing, delivering code? How do you do that continuously as a person? sort of can't. So again, automation comes in. Being able to take code that's coming out of QA and test, that's going into your commit library, and then automatically releasing that into production. If you're going to do, as we heard Gene talking about John Allspor and Yahoo many years ago, talking about 10 deploys a day, well, that's a low number these days for a lot of organizations. So if you're going to do 10 deploys a day, if you're going to do 100 deploys a day, small iterative releases, which is very much part of the agile movement, which flows into DevOps, automation is going to play a key part there. So automating that release cycle. Measurement, again, what is measurement if you're not using technology to do it? Are you sitting there watching lights blinking on servers and hard drives and trying to figure out how many IOs 
oh, you're doing a second? That's going to be really hard. I don't want to have to do that job. So measurement is also about technology. So things like application performance management, data center infrastructure management. Remember Facebook, infrastructure still matters. So think about how you can apply those kinds of technologies. But others as well, right? Things like capacity management, data management, getting data from those measurement systems back into your test and SQA environment so that you can test and do QA against a real-life workload, against real-life scale. And again, because you're providing that feedback from operations into development and into QA and into test, you're building trust and you're building empathy and you're creating a culture supported by these technologies. So think about your technology. What do you need? What have you got already? Where might you might need to supplement that? Where might you need to replace that? What might you need to get first to get going? And again, this is stuff you can do first thing Monday morning. I'll give you a couple of days off. You can go out on Monday morning and look at your tool chain and say, okay, well, I've got a, I've got a repository maybe. I've, maybe I'm using a Jenkins or something like that as well for the continuous commit. Maybe I'm using Git as my repository, so I'm, I'm working there well. Maybe I've got source code control. I'm okay with that. Um, but maybe I need to do something to speed up test and QA. Because remember, another thing you might be doing on Monday is looking at that life cycle, looking at that flow, and finding your constraints. So solve your problems. And tools can help you solve your problems. So think about that. Um, just some ideas about what tools you might be interested in looking at. This is from our research. Again, this is available at ca.com slash DevOps. Application performance monitoring, the number one solution. We did not just poll our own customers here. Our customers love CA APM. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a list of CA customers, but it's not. So, performance testing. Again, where are your constraints? Do you have problems when you release into production that your stuff was not tested at scale, under load, that you have performance issues? So test against real world environments again, for performance as well as for functionality. Functional testing is obviously right up there. Look at test automation. Look at things like CA app test to get that real life testing environment. Cloud test, CA cloud test as well, to get that real life environment tested functionally as well as for performance. Don't forget security. This is a growing area of concern in DevOps. How do I bring security into the development plan? Look at release automation. How do I close that gap between dev and ops by automating the bridge between them? the release process. There's a lot more there, and I've mentioned already things like capacity management, service virtualization, virtual lab management, cloud provisioning is another one to look at. But again, project and program management comes in, right? Because DevOps doesn't start with dev and it doesn't end with ops because it's about the end-to-end -end flow. Everyone needs empathy, right? not just DevOps. So, think about your technology and what you need to do. The question now becomes, I guess, what's next for you? And I hope I've given you some ideas today about where you can go. When it comes to what you want to do, think about what's holding you back. I talked about constraints. Find your constraints. What's holding you back from a DevOps journey? Why aren't you already doing it? You know what? Maybe you already are. If DevOps starts with empathy, if it starts with people, if it starts with collaboration, tools don't necessarily make the difference. You can't buy DevOps. So maybe you've already started your journey 
if your developers and operations are working together. Maybe you don't call it DevOps. Maybe you just call it team meetings. Maybe you call it Picnic Friday. It could be all sorts of ways that your teams connect. But are you having problems getting management on board? Are you having troubles justifying it? Look at your ROI. Look at data about ROI. Look at some of the survey data we did that showed around a 20% improvement across the board in things like revenue, shareholder value, which Gene Kim pointed out as well, in release rates, time to market, global growth, business outcomes, as well as financial outcomes, as well as operational and technology outcomes. You know, look at complexity. Have you got too many departments? Maybe you need an org change. Here's a concept. Maybe DevOps involves HR as well. We don't hear a lot about that, but especially in a large organization. That's going to have to be part of your discussion. Look at the roles. Look at the responsibilities. Are you maintaining problems because you're separating these teams by roles and responsibilities? If you're a leader in your IT organization, is it you that is part of this problem? Because you're saying, no, that's not your job. No, that's not your job. This is someone else's job. Look at budget. Look at skills. As I said, look at consultants. There's a lot of things to look at. Find your problems. And start to think about these areas I've talked about today. People, process, technology. Start to think about how you can build your checklist. Because I can't build it for you. So look at the approaches and attitudes. Look at the training, the partnering positions, the organization, roles and workflows. And please do look at CA Technologies and the offerings we have around agile parallel development, around continuous delivery, and around agile operations, because we think we can help in those areas. So I don't think I have time for Q&A, but I do want to thank you Please do remember to fill out your session evaluations uh, for all of the sessions online. Uh, this is really important to us to understand whether we're giving you good value here at CA World. Um, I'll be hanging around for a moment if you want to take questions after this, but I want to thank you very much for coming to CA World, for coming to my session. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>